All right, everyone. Well, thanks for coming today to our first Seller Express webinar. And my name is Colin. I'm a member of the Seller Express team, and I'll be presenting today's webinar. In case you have any questions, we have Dave here who will be answering them through the chat box. In this webinar, we're going to take a quick look at Seller Express's automatic repricing features. We'll quickly overview the pricing tools, scheduling, and exceptions. Of course, this is only a short webinar. Um, we'll just touch upon these and how best to make use of your automatic repricing tool. Once we have completed our webinar today, I'll also send out a collection of links to documents about other parts of the system we've just briefly touched upon. We'll also be recording this presentation to be uploaded onto YouTube, so if you're watching us there, don't forget to subscribe. Let's get started, shall we? Let's make sure we're all on the same page first and know exactly what our automatic repricer does. Taking a minimum and maximum price that you define for each product, our automatic repricing tool reads your competition's prices and reprices your stock accordingly. This way, you'll always be as competitive as you possibly can be. So first and foremost, so let's start by taking a look at the Amazon repricing rules. To pull these up, you start by clicking Settings, and then Amazon Account Settings, and finally, our Pricing Rules. So, you can either select an existing rule. Here, we've only got the one rule, which is the Amazon uh, UK default rule. Or you can create a new rule by clicking on New down here. For the sake of this presentation, we're just going to create a, a quick new rule. If we take a look at these rules, you'll see there are six different settings. We have settings 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and I'm just going to go through them in a bit more detail. We'll start with settings 4 and 5, which are your minimum and your maximum price. So here we are, minimum and maximum. Think of your minimum and maximum prices as your ceiling and floor price. These are the rules that the other rules will not go beyond. So you set your minimum and maximum, and then the other rules will work within those. This allows you to make sure that you sell your product at a high enough price to make a profit while not getting to silly levels. Setting four right here is your minimum price. This is based off either your cost price or your default sale price. If you have a look here, we can select cost price or default sale price to base it on. The cost price and the default sale price are fields that can be found on each product within Seller Express. So this means, although you have one rule, it will apply differently for each individual product. If we set our minimum to cost price, we can then add a set value or percentage to this. Please remember that the percentage is of your cost price and not of the two combined. So if you have a cost price of £5, and then an additional value of two pounds and a percentage on top, it will be of the five pounds and not of the seven. If you like to keep things simple, we'd normally suggest setting your minimum price to be your cost price. So let's just set it to cost price zero, zero. This means that you can put your minimum price straight into cost and you know exactly where your product cost price and minimum price is whenever you add and update a product. So instead of uh, worrying about this is my cost plus this percentage plus this value, you can have this set number. You can, of course, have the percentages and the values as well. Though if you want to keep it simple, you can easily do that. Your maximum price works in the same way. It's based off your cost and your sale price as well. You see, it's got the same options on the drop-down. We'd recommend setting your sale price Again, if you're looking to keep it simple, sale price, one pound and zero percent. Now, with our minimum and maximum set, let's take a look at settings one, two, and three. Setting one is how Seller Express will price your product if you're the only seller. This is based on cost price, so it can include a set value that can be added to it, a percentage or value that's added to it. For example, if you have a cost price of five pounds, plus 500 percent, just to make sure we get uh, enough back, plus 500 percent, your sale price for that product, if you're the only seller, would be 25 pounds. Of course, when a competitor joins the sale on that product, then 
settings two and three would apply. Setting two is how your product will be priced if you are competing with Amazon, while setting three is when you're competing against another marketplace seller. So you can see here, same sort of rules are applying. Like the others, you can add a percentage or and a set value to deduct. For example, if you set setting free, so here we go, setting free to free pence, so 0 0.0 free, you will undercut the lowest price seller by free pence unless they are below your minimum price. I can also confirm that unlike many of our competitors, Seller Express also takes into account other sellers shipping whenever working out the total price. If you want more information on setting six, we'll be sending that uh, in the email after the webinar. Those are our rules, but how do you get these rules to apply to your products? To do this, we need to bridge the gap using these settings. Now, as you can see, we've got condition, format, category, department, and supplier. And what these allow us to do is to bridge the gulf between the rule and your products. If, for example, we set the format to DVD, and any product that has the format DVD applied to it will then be grouped with this uh, pricing rule and be priced by this pricing rule. Okay, now with that done, we then move on to our price check settings. Our price check settings include settings that allow us to bypass the pricing rules as it would be. They give you greater control over your automatic repricer and allow you to ignore other sellers based on their name, if you know specifically who you want to ignore, or if they have too little quantity for you to compete with. If we enter a name of a seller in here that we're not looking to compete with, then we'll automatically ignore them. If you have uh, set the minimum quantities to yes, and then enter a minimum quantity of stock for the seller that we do not want to price with. For example, if we set our quantity to three, it means that any seller with less than three stock, we will not compete with. The pricing rules will just disregard them. I'll send more information about best price once the webinar has been completed. So that's the Amazon pricing rules and the Amazon pricing settings. So let's have a look at play.com while we're at it. If you're a new customer to uh, Seller Express, you will be shown the fixed pricing option first. This fixed pricing option allows you to set one fixed rule for your products. As you are interested in price checking, we're using the auto pricing tool rather than the fixed tool. If you're looking for more information on the fixed pricing tool, I'll send it when we finish the call or well, the webinar. <laughs> so. It's important to remember that Play.com is different to Amazon, so of course its pricing rules will be different as well. That being said, most of the same principles apply. When dealing with Play rules, our minimum and maximum prices are worked out in the same way as Amazon. You can set your minimum based on your cost and sale price. The one thing to make note of is that you're setting one from Amazon, that's the one which is applied whenever you are the only seller, is also your maximum price. Settings 2 and 3 work in the same way as Amazon, but this time it's beat Play.com and of course beat another marketplace seller. All of these work like Amazon with a set value and or a percentage as well. You can also include your postage here. We don't offer direct repricing on eBay due to the nature of how its catalog works. It is however possible to reprice eBay through linking your eBay prices to your Amazon price. I'll send more details about this at the end of the webinar. Play.com and Amazon repricers both allow you to set your own schedule, so let's take a wee look at that. Using scheduling, you are in the driver's seat and decide how often your automatic repricer will work. You can set when your repricer will start and how often it will run after that. Please do remember that it does take time for your repricer to run and this period, this time period will vary based on how many products you have, how many rules you have, how many competitors you have, and how many products need their prices changed. If your repricer takes too long to run, then the next scheduled reprice will be skipped, and you'll have a warning displayed down here telling you that uh, your repricer needs longer to run. Please don't set your repricer to work more often than once every 30 minutes, as this can lead to a backlog on both Amazon and Play to update your prices. 
Our repricing software is specifically designed to work on your home or office PC, but we know this isn't suitable for everyone. We do offer a virtual repricing solution where your repricer can be run on our servers. I'll send more details about this when the webinar is completed. So there we have it, a quick overview of how to make best use of your Seller Express automatic repricing tool. As I mentioned, we've just touched upon the subject, so please do take a look at the help files that I'm going to send at the end of the presentation. I'll also be uploading this video to YouTube later if you fancy rewatching it anyway. Thank you for coming, and if you have any final questions, please direct them to Dave. See you at our next webinar.